Chico and Rita is one of the most uniquely beautiful and romantic animated films I have ever had the joy of watching. I first saw it around 2012 when it was hosted on Netflix, and its art style, music, and timeless love story stuck with me for nine years. I recently watched it again, and I felt compelled to share this movie with my audience so more people can see this wonderful work of art. Chico and Rita is a 2010 Spanish adult animated musical romantic film in Spanish and English. The story is set in multiple cities across continents and decades. The music of the film is primarily Afro-Cuban and Latin jazz. I am not a fluent Spanish speaker, so please excuse any mispronunciations. We begin in 1948 Havana, Cuba. Chico the pianist and his best friend Ramon are struggling to make ends meet. On one fateful evening, they encounter Rita performing at a bar, and Chico and Ramon set out to recruit her as their singer to win a competition. They follow her to another venue where Chico is pulled in as the missing pianist for the band as they play an Igor Stravinsky piece. Rita is impressed by his sight reading and takes an interest in him, ditching her date to hang out with Chico and Ramon instead. Chico and Rita go to an empty bar to play music and fall in love that evening. The next morning, Chico's ex-girlfriend appears at Chico's place and they fight. Rita leaves angry and Chico is distraught. Ramon tracks Rita down and convinces her to perform with Chico so they can win the radio competition. They win the contest and a month-long performance contract, but are separated by external forces as Rita's talent becomes more widely known. What follows is a grand, sweeping, lifelong love story across Havana, New York City, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Paris. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the plot, so either skip to the next section of this video or watch it anyway. I promise you it's still worth it to see the film on your own, even if you know this stuff. So when Rita begins to rise to fame, thanks to a businessman named Ron who spots her at one of their performances, she travels to New York City to perform. During contract negotiation, she insists that Chico join her as her pianist, but Chico mistakes the situation and believes Rita is leaving him, so she goes alone. Chico and Ramon follow Rita to New York sometime later and begin working in the city. Chico and Rita's lives intertwine and separate yet again, with Ron working to keep them apart, this time leveraging Ramon against Chico. To hold up his end of Ron's bribe, Ramon signs Chico away to a performance deal with Dizzy Gillespie in Europe. Rita becomes a movie star as Chico's music gets radio plays. Sometime later, they reunite once again and plan to marry, but Ramon slips drugs into Chico's coat and sends the cops to get him deported back to Cuba, and Rita's career comes to a halt when she publicly denounces the racism of the film industry. 47 years later, Chico works as a shoe shiner in Cuba, and a famous jazz singer asks him to record his old music with her. He becomes world famous once again and is allowed to re-enter the United States. He reunites with Rita at the motel she's been housekeeping for all this time, and at last, nothing can separate them. Rita is a strong-willed woman with a soft heart and an abundance of talent. Initially, I wasn't sure if Rita maintained those feelings of adoration throughout it all the same way that Chico did. My dude took a boat to America to see her and she turned him away and then cried about it, which I think was likely out of shock of seeing him so far away from home. But since they both work in the entertainment scene, they keep running into each other and we get to see her fear and anticipation of seeing him again. Chico comes off as a bit of a playboy in the beginning, but seems like a well-intentioned man, a hopeless romantic who reacts to things a bit too hotly. His loyalty to Rita never really dies after he meets her, even when he meets a lover in France. They go see Rita's movie together, and he renames his song for Rita after the woman's dog, Lily. Like, damn, that woman really meant nothing to him, huh? He renamed the song after the dog and not the lady. Anyway, I think many of the two's conflicts in the film could have been solved if these two had communicated better. Chico blew up at Rita when he thought she was leaving for New York without him, but if he had listened to her or if she had told him what was going on instead of staying quiet, they could have gone to New York together. But I think that's part of what makes this relationship realistic because people don't always have the guts to say what they truly feel. Usted que esté sentada aquí a tu lado, comiendo frijoles. Me gusta tanto que me da miedo. I don't 
don't really know why Ron wants to keep them apart so desperately. Maybe he thinks Chico would slow Rita's growth as an artist down, or maybe he wants her for himself, but for Chico and Rita, it seems like nothing from intercontinental travel to movie deals can keep them away from each other. Until Chico's deportation and their chance to marry stolen from them, Rita's breaking point. She drinks to cope with her pain and tanks her career by openly discussing racism in the entertainment industry at her New Year's party. But there are some things that I don't understand. The life of a black artist is truly amazing. What is she saying? Here I am, in this great club, in this beautiful hotel, but I cannot stay in it. I have to sleep in a motel out of town. Both of them no longer care about their individual futures after having their shared future ripped from them. Chico even implies he's no longer truly alive. These two spend the rest of their lives waiting for each other. No pretendo ser tu dueña. No soy nada. Yo no tengo vanidad. Music is the lifeblood of Chico and Rita. The film's original soundtrack was composed by Cuban musician Bebo Valdez. It also features the musicians Chucho Valdez, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Chano Poso, Tito Puente, Ben Webster, and Thelonious Monk. Chico and Ramon hang out with Chano Pozo, go joyriding, and are even there to witness his death in Harlem, which is something that actually happened in real life. Pozo's killer was a local dealer named Cabito, who Pozo accused of selling him shitty weed, and Cabito retaliated. So in the movie, Ramon and Chico are there to witness it all. I thought including that piece of history was pretty interesting. Music plays throughout much of the movie, and at times carries the emotional weight in place of dialogue. A great moment that exemplifies this is the moment Chico steps in as pianist for the Stravinsky piece. You can see it all on Rita's face. I've seen people online calling this movie ugly, and I will fight anyone who wants to say it to my face, because this film has one of the most unique animated art styles I've seen on a screen, and that's the whole reason it drew me in in the first place back in the day. I love the way they desaturate everything in the winter when the world is draped in snow. I love the way everything moves, and I especially love the sequence for when Chico moves to New York, and his feelings about his life and what he's chasing are represented in this beautiful, color-blocked dream sequence. Tragically, the film had a budget of $10 million and earned $2.2 million in the box office. It was nominated for five awards and won three of them. Nominated for 2012 Academy and Annie Awards for Best Animated Feature, and won the 2011 European Film Award for Best Animated Feature Film, Goya Award for Best Animated Film, and Festival of European Animated Feature Films and TV Specials for Hungarian National Student Jury Award. That's a mouthful. Anyway, I've pretty much never seen anyone talk about this movie, which is a damn shame. Apparently there was gonna be an English dub starring Mary J. Blige, but I can't find much information about it, so I have to assume it was abandoned. A sad fact, because more people should be seeing this movie. The story involves a lot of Chico or Ramon following Rita or tracking her down in the name of love and infatuation, and I think that's worth mentioning. I feel like that would be creepy if the feelings were not reciprocated by Rita, but she clearly loved him all along. It's just one of those things I recognized as an adult that slipped past me when I watched it as a teenager. The pacing of this film is such that multiple times over you feel like all is lost, and then you find out there's more to come. The movie surprises you with where it goes, it feels like an odyssey, and it satisfies with an ending that not only ties together the love story, but other threads throughout the lives of Chico and Rita. <clears throat> okay, so um do I uh do I actually remember how to record one of these things? T O O N R I F I C T A R I Q head of the Offbeat Kiki fan club, family guy, apologist and certified gang member. I've wanted to see Chico and Rita since it came out. I remember seeing images and some animation as a kid and not knowing anything about it, but being overwhelmingly fascinated. And you know, when that kind of stuff happens to you 
as a kid, right? It's it's natural to see a film in question and it gives off mad like eh vibes, but nah man, Chico and Rita was everything I wanted it to be and then some. First man, I can't even Bam. Do you see how this thing is animated? Some is clearly rotoscoped, some isn't, some has a little CGI, but it's all beautiful. This is great flow to the movement, especially when you catch stuff like Rita dancing and fam, this car chase scene is crazy. The designs have this kind of contour nature to them. I don't really know how to describe it, but my art homies know what I'm talking about. And homies just sounds kind of gross. Hey, uh, Keeks, can I say Nick? Okay, I guess not. Not only is this thing gorgeous in literally every regard, but it gets you invested in the romance more than any other animated thing I've ever seen before in my life. Chico and Rita go through so much in their journey in love. A lot of misunderstandings, a lot of unpredictable changes in their lives, a lot of things out of their control. But the love is always there, and you as the audience member can feel that, you know? In the hollowness, the emptiness they feel when they're apart, it's such a real thing. For a good portion of their lives, they're pretty much on autopilot. The film makes you feel and understand that in ways that I don't even think I can explain properly. That's why I feel like it deserves more love. More people should know about this. More people should see it. It bleeds style and grace and whatever the hell else Biggie was talking about. It really is an experience like no other. And I think my experience with Chico and Rita is really a testament to how cool it is to consume media a lot of the time. Every time you throw something on, you're rolling the dice. And when you add excitement to that, right, there's an extra layer of pressure there. Being excited for something is dangerous, yo, because it has all the power in the world to let you down. And yeah, it sucks when it does. I hate being let down just like anyone else. Man, but like, when it doesn't? When it doesn't let you down, you get something that is really beautiful. You get a feeling that I like, that I can't explain. You get Chigo and Rita. I wanna remember us. Hey, if you get claim peaks, well, my life, it ain't my fault. I guess at its core, this is one of those love at first sight type of stories. Chico and Rita fall for each other while knowing basically nothing about each other, but that happens in real life sometimes. You just look at a person and you somehow know they're going to be important to you. Maybe not for forever, or maybe by your side until the day you die. It's hard to know. Love is an ineffable experience that many people have tried to write about in their lifetime, but few have succeeded in capturing genuinely. One day with a person can change your perception forever, and some people will spend years chasing that feeling. That enduring love whose touch never leaves your soul is what I adore so much about Chico and Rita. I've seen few movies that carried that affection so well, and that's why I believe it's a film all romantics, musicians, and lovers of animation should see at least once in their lifetime. Y de que iba yo a tener miedo. De hacerle caso a tu corazón por una vez. Ah, ya. Tú lo que estás es chochao. Debes haber amado mucho a esa mujer. Para componer una canción así. Bueno. Thank you so much for being here and for watching my first ever movie review. I hope you enjoyed it. I have a short list of movies I'd like to review and analyze, including more foreign animated films you may have missed. If there's anything you'd like to see me talk about in the future, tell me in the comments. 
Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, links for all that in the description. Stay hydrated, get vaccinated, and I'll see you next time. Can I ask you kind of a weird question? Thank you.